Over the past year, as conflict has flared in Myanmar's western Rakhine state, thousands of Rohingya have fled their homes. Many are living in crowded and dirty camps. Displaced people regularly seek refuge across the border, fleeing to neighbouring countries. Bangladesh already hosts several hundred thousand refugees and says it cannot take any more. Now thousands are coming to Malaysia. Asia Calling recently spent time with one Rohingya refugee in the capital, Kuala Lumpur. When 20-year-old Kairul Basar took the sea for the first time, he left behind all that he had ever known. He is a Rohingya, born in Burma, but he has never been given citizenship. We cannot, uh, there, is, there happen uh, a big problem with us, our, with our ethnic Rohingya, so we cannot stay there. To save our, my life, I out from my own native, which is Rakhine State, Mongo. They have our also our government do not decide anything, uh, so they are kind fully. Uh, they are kind ethnic was fully killed to our ethnic, uh, so we cannot stay there. So he went first to Bangladesh, where he has relatives living in refugee camps. He crossed the border by swimming across the river. He then made a dangerous journey across the sea to Thailand, before crossing illegally in Malaysia. Uh, there is a, little, a lot of forest there, well, coming by forest to forest. And we walk, uh, 11 hours we walk. From there, after walking 11 hours, we take a car. We can come with that car, seven members. Kairul has registered with the UN refugee body in Malaysia and now lives in this apartment block with other Rohingyas from Burma. Kintun lives downstairs. He arrived with his family of four yesterday by plane from Yangon. Today is a critical. They are sweeping out all the Muslims from the country. Now they are sending all the people to the uh, camp. What's the meaning of camp? Why these people have to be refugee? These people have their own life, own business, and these people as a human being. Now they are in the camp with no hopes, no Medicare for the old, no education for the kids. Kintun ran an art gallery in Yangon. He feared that the violence happening in the Rakhine state would spread to Yangon. Some friends are still working in the government. They are my college friends. They are my really colleague, colleague. And when I was in the university, they told me that, they informed me that, leave <laughs> before you have to go to the camp. So that's why I decide. His wife's family is from the Kyokpyu township. In October, the entire Muslim quarter, more than 300 houses belonging to the Rohingya community, was burned to the ground in communal violence. Kin's family now live in a refugee camp, but they called him when their houses were on fire. I heard a lot of noisy sounds, and I have never been heard before in my life. <coughs> some are crying, some are calling the God Allah, and uh, some say that uh, God, some, th some say that the defense, and some say that the pool the water, and some say that a lot of things, so, so noisy. So I cannot, uh, I cannot feel myself. I cry, all, I cry the whole the time. And I also I'm listening the phone also. And then I say that what we have to do, you protect them, you protect them how much you can. And if you cannot protect, you have to run, because of life is the first. Leave all, all your, all your property, leave in there, burning all, okay, run. So they run. Now I'm running on the breast of the Malaysia with passport. After two months, it will be expired and I, will, I have to run illegally. Now I'm trying to contact in the UN and then trying to contact with a lot of people in the worldwide. Because of our last two years ago, I was in Afghanistan 
uh, working in an American company. So that's why I got a lot of friends and the worldwide. Kintun and his family tourist visa for Malaysia will run out in two months. He is trying to register with the UN refugee body and contact his friends around the world asking for help. He doesn't want to stay in Malaysia. I want our land back. This is our land. This is our home. This is not our home. Now that we have no home, where we have to go? We cannot live in Malaysia in a whole life. This is their country, not our country, not, not our home. So we have to go back home. So we need home. So we need home. I said the people, nobody can get your home back. We have to get back our home, back ourselves. Azudin Hizi reports for Asia Calling. And that's all for this special edition of Asia Calling. If you'd like more stories from our correspondents across Asia, visit asiacalling.org. I'm Rebecca Henschke. Goodbye for now.